so I got to a series of cracks that generally I would just grind out and backfill with thickened epoxy, fair out, prime, and paint. But these cracks are in a previous repair, and after I started the grinding, I'm not sure if you can see, but that is super deep and nothing but a lot of filler. So if I was to fill that with epoxy like I normally would and make it look like it never happened, it's just gonna crack again right next to where I fix and continue to do so. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's about nine or 10 big cracks there. So this was a quick repair done in the past and now I'm going to have to grind off all the paint and primer and see exactly how big this repair is and most likely I'm going to have to dish out all of that Bondo filler that they used, start from scratch, build it up, glass it so that it is structural and then the cracks are guaranteed to never come back. So I just wanted to show you all that real quick. And as I proceed with this repair, I'll let y'all see how I do it. All right. All right, guys. I honestly can't tell if this is factory work or aftermarket work, but regardless, it's messed up and I get to fix it. Yay. So anyhow, this is what I'm dealing with. And, you know, just so you can see, I mean, that's, that's not good. So what I'm going to do is tape off a huge square and grind all of that off back to the glass and I'm going to lay three or four layers of 1708 on it and then fair it out and prime it and catch it all up to speed with the rest of the hull. So ha, you got to love it. Boatloads of fun. Anyhow, back at you soon. All right, I'm going to grind now, and I'll get back to y'all soon. All right, here we go with the grinding. Good dodge. Now I just have to clean that, solvent wipe it, prime it in epoxy, and I'm going to lay up three or four layers of 1708. And y'all are going to see the whole process here on camera. On this side, on the port side, I have just uncovered, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is exactly the same as the other side. There is over a quarter inch of filler on the whole back half of this boat. So rather than proceeding with this, I'm also going to hold off until the owner gets here, which he'll be here this weekend, and we'll discuss whether or not we're going to remove all this and start from scratch, or if I'm just going to spot fill, make it look like it didn't happen, and if cracks come back in the future, well, we address it then. I'm pretty sure that the finish coat on this boat is going to be an acrylic urethane, so it's repairable. and. Uh, We'll just have to see how it goes. But I've uncovered quite a few more flaws on the transom. You know, quite a bit of cracks and whatnot, but I'm getting ready to bust those open and I'm hoping that it's not got the amount of filler as the port and starboard aft section of the boat does. But I'm gonna catch all this on video and, and y'all can see it in motion. All right, be back soon. Okay, fellas, so here, we have our first crack I'm gonna show y'all busting open and I have my good old die grinder. So generally what you wanna do is div it in at the beginning of the crack and div it in at the end and remove everything all the way down to the fiberglass. So like I said, hopefully this doesn't have that much filler but we're about to find out. Here we go. <laughs> It does 
does have a lot of filler. You gotta love it. Anyhow, let's just say this didn't have that much filler and I already got into the glass. After you grind this open like this, you need to bevel down the edge because you don't want a hard edge for the filler to be up against. It's, it's just gonna crack again. So when you feather it out, it gives the filler a little bit more to bite to and no hard lines to re-crack again. So it would be like this. And that is how you would start out repairing a crack. Uh, if this didn't have that much filler, my next step would be brush some regular epoxy in there, give it about 15, 20 minutes to tack up, and then I would use all fair, which is a two-part epoxy, and I would fair it out, and I would do that step three times, you know, pushing it in as tight as I can and just building it up that way so that it becomes more of like an extra epoxy coating and not so much of a big glob of filler but I can't do this that way so yeah gosh one thing after another anyhow I'll get back with y'all soon I'm gonna go around and bust open other cracks and see exactly what I have going on so yeah I'll see you then okay here I am getting ready to start filling and glazing every imperfection I can find except for the big cracks because the owner still hasn't showed up yet and i'm saving that until after he gets here and then i'll proceed with that process but in the meantime all fair is my number one preferred filler uh you use this before priming you really don't want to use it after priming if you don't have to but you get lots of working time with it you can mix up a batch and and just keep rolling along and just fill every spot that you can find. It's not like the 3M premium filler or the polyester fillers and whatnot, you know, where you mix up a golf ball size and you have a matter of minutes before it kicks. So, all fair is the way to go. And it's a one-to-one -one mix. So, do that little plop. I always called this stuff Peter Pan food. Don't ask why, but after it's mixed, the color it has just reminds me of Peter Pan. But, uh, anyhow, when doing this, you know, I'm, I'm so used to using this stuff that I feel pretty confident about my mixtures. But if you've never used this before, you might want to use a measuring device because you know, if you don't mix it properly, it won't kick. But anyhow, that's just how it is. And you want to make sure you mix it really good. You don't want to see any white or any red. You just want one uniform color of a darker pink. Obviously, these are my main tools of the trade. I use them all the time, but one uniform color. That's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna get on with the glazing and you can watch me run down the side of the boat. Okay, so all the initial glazing is done. Um, the only thing I have left is that massive repair and some deeper cracks on the stern and on the aft section of the other side to do. But as of right now, that is the only thing keeping me from masking off, solvent cleaning and priming. So that's a plus for me because I'm still waiting on the owner. And uh, at this very moment, he is now the guy holding up the job. So I'm doing everything I can to get this knocked out within the three week time frame. Uh, I really don't think I'm gonna be able to pull it off, but I have to try. 
and uh, that's just all there is to it. You know, if I can't make the deadline, then I can't make the deadline. I'm one person, and uh, this is a lot of boat for one guy to tackle. But uh, I do it all the time, but I have good timelines, you know, months, not weeks. So I'm just going to keep plucking along and make the best of it, and uh, I'm either going to get it or I'm not. But I can assure you it's not from lack of trying. So it's Sunday evening, Memorial Day weekend, and uh, I'm ready for a beer. So my day is done, and uh, I'll be back to you all soon. Later. Okay, everybody. So the owner came yesterday finally, and we discussed how to go about fixing these repairs, and I'm just going to be doing some spot fixing. So... I went ahead and prepped the rest of this, getting it ready for glass, but the first thing I'm going to do real quick is use this all there and fill all these holes and other deeper voids to prevent air pockets in the glass layup when I do that. So here we go. The process begins. Hope you all enjoy. And I always take my finger and shove the filler as far into the hole as possible just to help give it a little bit more grip but I'm glassing it up anyway it's just an extra step that I take I feel pretty good about that so I'm gonna let that tack up and get the glass cut to fit and uh, I'll be back soon and we can lay it up all right, see you soon. Just to kind of explain real quick, here's my glass. I'm getting ready to cut my last piece. All I did was taped up one long sheet of fiberglass, 1708 up there, and I used a black Sharpie and traced out the recessed edge. So now I'm just cutting it to fit. I'm gonna try to do this in four solid pieces. You know, some people like to be really neat with this process. Me personally, I'd rather just get it up there and epoxy it in place. I don't really care what this step looks like because, well, I'm gonna cover it all up with fairing, primer, and paint. So anyhow, I just wanted to show y'all real quick. That's all I did was took one piece, cut it, traced it, cut another one, and now this is my fourth piece, so. Once I get this one cut, I'm going to get everything set up and start laying glass, and y'all will see it. All right, back soon. Okay, everybody. The mixing process. Got the good old West system. And this is a 5 to 1 mixture. And I'm about to show y'all what I mean by priming the surface with epoxy. Obviously, for those of y'all that do not know. Again, that's mainly why I'm doing this video for, uh, for the guys that don't know. Okay, surface is primed. Now it's time to wet out the cloth. Now this pushes out air bubbles and any extra resin that you might not want in there. I mean, you want to make sure all the cloth is wetted out and whatnot and laid up nice, but you don't want resin rich products. It could potentially become brittle in the future, so really just won't wet it out cloth with, you know, the average resin in there. But all this drippy stuff, that's what these are for. It gets all that out, kind of makes it a little more level. Just 
makes the job go easier on the finishing side of things. So, I'm not worried about all those drips. I gotta grind that anyway. I don't really think I need a fourth layer, but just to be safe, I'm gonna slap one up there anyway, and if I gotta grind most of that last layer off, well, so be it. I'll have a full, solid thickness of fiberglass there, so that'll probably be the strongest part of the boat. You never know. People like to be neat with this step, but I am not that guy. Done. Now I'm, I'm just going to take a rag and solvents and clean up all the drips that have gone down on the bottom paint because you don't really want to be grinding into that, but uh. Other than that, yeah, I'm satisfied with that, so we're good to go. Next step will be grinding and fairing, and uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. I'll be back soon, fellas. Okay, fellas, as much as I hate wearing these suits, especially on a hot day like today, I figured it's better to just go ahead and get my sweat on and avoid that hard itch that you get when you grind glass. Usually I wouldn't wear one of these and when I'm done, I'd just go jump off the dock, but I'm not going to do that today. So here we go. I'm going to grind it. This stuff will wear you out too. Yeah. All right, so I just did something that you should not do. Okay, and that is when I got to the bottom of my repair, I went ahead and removed the bottom paint to give me a surface to fare to. Do not do that unless you know how to clean it properly because one thing you do not want is bottom paint dust getting up into your work. Nothing sticks to it except for bottom paint. And uh, it's just not good, but I was suited up and I said the heck with it. So I went ahead and removed the bottom paint right then anyway, but I'll make sure that my surface is clean before fairing. So if you're not experienced with this type of work, if I can give you any advice, it is do not sand bottom paint next to a surface you're sanding for prep primer or whatnot. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to note that, but again, I am the guy doing the work, so I just do it the way I do it. But anyhow, that's grinding. Now I'm a solvent, clean the heck out of it, and uh, I'm gonna mix up some all fair and do the first application of three applications of all fair before priming. I put it on nice and tight, you know, I make sure I shove the all fair into all the the little tiny openings and porousness that's in the glass work and uh, that's just how you do it put it on tight not thick so uh, you'll see the process so I'll be back soon fellas just want to show you this after you do a glass layout you want to go around and find areas that are like this you know that's just a little void and you want to dig these out it's hard to do this holding my phone <clears throat> and pluck that crap out and I'll backfill that with thickened epoxy so 
you need to look really good because if you just prime or paint over these spots well then you yourself are going to end up having eggshell voids in your own work so i always go around with a close eye and find these spots dig them out and backfill them so uh there's no getting around it it just happens and i can't tell you how many jobs i've dug into where this was done in the past and the people didn't dig out these spots so it's just an extra step and i just wanted to note that so fairing is getting ready to happen okay fellas all fair time So I got the bulk of it done with the first go. Now I'm going to take a little six inch and just go around the edges where the glass meets the rest of the hall. Alright. <clears throat> There's the first go of off air, so that's going pretty smoothly. Okay. Quicksand with 36 grit. Just figured I'd show y'all exactly what I mean by quicksand. So, you know, I did this in less than 24 hours ago, so you really, you don't even have to scratch it if you lay it on smooth enough, but I still like to do it to give it a chemical and mechanical bond. So, just thought I'd show you what I meant by quicksand. that solvent wipe it and apply the second application off there as I get to solvent cleaning for the priming stuff in the, the finish coat you'll see a bit more about how I solvent wipe so anyhow that's called up the speed I'm gonna go mix up some off air and y'all will see me do the second application be back soon okay second application. Voila. Second coat done. Oh yeah, she's gonna be beautiful. Okay, fellas. Third process, third application. Same steps as yesterday. Quick and simple. So I got all this sanded and clean, but before doing the final coat of all fair on that, I found some cracks in here 
and I figured I'd go ahead and get these busted open, seal them in epoxy and let that tack off while I'm glazing this big spot out again and then jump back and glaze out those. So I just figured I'd let y'all see how I fix cracks. And it's pretty much the same with gel coat, only rather than using epoxy and whatnot to fill it, you'd want to use the gel coat to thicken it up with the 406 colloidal silica powder, get it like peanut butter and use it as a filler like that. It works great, so. But we all have our own ways of doing things. But anyhow, on to crack busting open. Okay, so I'm gonna get ready and brush less system in these cracks. And these little chip brushes suck. I hate it when the little hairs fall out into your work. So I knock all the loose bristles out, then take a piece of tape and go tight around it. And that keeps any remaining loose bristles from flying out into your work. At least it's supposed to anyway. Okay, so I got my West system here. Remember, it's a five to one mix, unless you have the pump set up, and then it's just one pump to one pump, but this step really isn't needed, I don't think, because of just the fact that it's a whole bunch of Bondo and whatnot, but this just reassures that the crack won't happen again where I'm fixing it, but it's gonna crack again next to where I fix. So no matter what I do, I don't think I'll be able to avoid that doing these spot fixes. So I just have my little brush and I just take West System and brush it up into the crack. Let it soak up into that filler. And then I'll just let that get tacky before putting all fair in it. But that all fair will never come out of this crack again doing it this way. So, just thought I'd show you all this step. All right, I'm gonna let that tack up. I'm gonna go ahead and mix all fair and fair out this big repair. And by the time I'm done, that'll be ready for all fair. So, be back soon, fellas. Okay, third application time. Farron is done. Next step is I'm gonna grab the air file and, and file her down nice and level. And then I'm gonna seal it off with Bar Rust 235. That is a bad to the bone product. It is rock solid and strong. And uh, I plan to do that. Well, I don't know if I'll do it tomorrow. I don't know if I wanna work this weekend, but. So I'll air file that spot prime that area with 235 and then mask off in 545 the entire boat so uh yeah now i'm gonna take you back to the cracks all right the epoxy is tacked off enough for my liking so you know i sealed it with that and now i'm gonna shove some off air in there the epoxy has soaked into all that bondo filler and i mean it's it's really doing what it's supposed to and shoving the all fair on top of that while it's still tacky is going to make this and the west system just cure together while curing into the surfaces around it so i mean this is just going to be rock solid repairs regardless of the crap that's around it you know spot fixing so anyhow enough talking here we go hope i don't block the camera so y'all can see what i'm doing That is good to go. These spots are, are good. You know, it's, it's better than the rest of the boat. And uh, now that'll dry, I'll quick sand. I'll do a second and a third application of all fair and then those spots are ready for primer. So it's a really quick process, quick five minute job like they always say. Yeah, right, but anyhow, so this is how I fix cracks. See you soon. 
Okay, fellas, so I didn't work this weekend. I decided to take my kids to the ocean instead. You gotta play sometimes, but. Anyhow, so I'm getting ready to air file this down using this guy, and uh, hopefully this goes as smoothly as I plan on it. So stay tuned, here we go. Here's the bar rust 235. I love this stuff. It's a four to one mixture and I always give my products at least 15 minutes to induct, you know, let the chemicals shake hands and whatnot. So yeah, I've got about six more minutes left and then I'll get this all primed with the 235 and uh, move on with the rest of the haul. So I'll be back to you guys soon. It's looking pretty good, so I'm going to let that tack up for a bit, and I'll apply two more coats to it after a while, so see you fellas soon. Coat number two. Alright, I'm happy with that. I don't need to do a third coat, so I'm going to let that tack up and move on with the rest of the haul and get the cracks called up to speed and everything sanded and hopefully I'll have the whole thing in 545 before the end of this week. Fingers crossed. So stay tuned. I'll be back soon.